Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. Good well, morning. Good morning. This is week five of uh, yeah. our Sunday school lesson, and we are so blessed that God gives us the opportunity to share his word with you each Sunday. Even though we're 1,700, 2,000 miles apart, we are with you in heart and spirit, and we look forward to the day that we could put our arms around you and just give you a big old hug. Yes, we are. So, if you remember from last week, we talked about Saul, the persecutor, <clears throat> who became Paul, the apostle, because God changed his heart. Today, we're going to talk about another apostle of Jesus Christ, and this man's name is Peter. Surely, you've heard his name before. Jesus' first followers were from the Jewish people in Israel. And as we talk about Peter this week, we're going to come to understand that Peter, like Paul, previously known as Saul, they both they believed in God, and they tried very, very hard to obey God's laws. So we start off in Acts chapter 10. Rudy, would you read for us? Yes, I will. Chapter 10, verse 9. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Peter was near nearing the city of Caesarea, and he wanted to spend some time with God. You know, so much was happening in the early church. It was growing very fast. It was spreading out all over the uh, country of Israel and into other countries. That I'm sure Peter was very busy, and he had difficult times finding a quiet place just to spend with the Lord. He went up on the roof top of this house because that was a common practice in biblical days that people would go on their roof for a quiet time. Sometimes they stored products up there, such as their wheat or even some of their animals. But in this case, Peter went on the rooftop to pray. We've also seen this in Daniel 6, that Daniel, who was a servant of God in the Old Testament, would go on the rooftop of his bedchamber, face Israel, and pray three times a day. We, we understand that the Bible teaches us to always be in an attitude of prayer. Praying is a good habit for all of us to get in. We should start our day with prayer. We should end our day with prayer. But we can pray to God all throughout the day. And much like uh, Daniel would pray three times a day, uh, some people pray just continuously. So we always want to be in an attitude of prayer. This particular day, though, God is going to share something very important with Peter. And he's going to do it while Peter is in an attitude of prayer. And Julia's going to read that portion and it's going to share with us what God is trying to teach Peter. So I'm going to keep on here in Acts 10 starting at verse 10. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat but while they made ready he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and let down to the earth, a, a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him on earth. That's what it looked like, huh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So, preparation for a meal at that time took a very long time. And it's in spite of the fact that Peter was very hungry, you can't you couldn't just open a can of something you couldn't run to in and out burger so while he was waiting he prayed and as he prayed the holy spirit started to move within him 
So the Bible said Peter saw something like a sheet bound up at four corners. What, you, what is that? Well, God often uses visions to communicate his will through to men. In the Old Testament, we know there was at least 12 different times that God sent a vision to an individual. And even in the New Testament, at least five times, he sent visions to individuals. And that way is, that's how God will show what he wants us to learn or maybe what he wants us to do, just through visions. Continuing in Acts in 10, 12 through 13, we read, In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth wild beasts, creepy things, birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. So this great sheet filled with animals, Peter saw animals that if he ate would cause him to become unclean according to Jewish custom. That making a meal from them would cause him to sin. Well, why, why, why would he think that? Why would he think that, un, that some animals would cause him to sin? They were all kinds of animals, pigs, cows, chickens, sheep. And in the Jewish tradition, doesn't allow you to eat them. That was from the Old Testament under the Old Covenant. That's what we mean when we say clean and unclean of animals. So the, the vision, the sheet coming down filled with animals and some of them that Peter knew he was not allowed to use for his nourishment. So why, why would there be unclean animals in Peter's vision? In Peter's mind, there were many unclean animals in the sheet. He had learned what was clean and unclean through the book of Leviticus, where the uh, dietary laws were given to the people. Uh, but that was under the Old Covenant. And so he thought that if he ate the animals described in Leviticus 11, he would be sinning? Yeah, I think uh, he believed that if he ate any of the unclean animals, he'd be breaking the Jewish tradition or Jewish dietary laws. So these are the practices he learned as a child, that this was the traditions of the, the Jewish faith, yes? Yes. And as we remember from... Last week, Saul the persecutor, before he became Paul the apostle, the way he was, he was harming Christians, hurting Christians, he, he thought that he was honoring God. Now Peter thinks that not eating some of these animals, that's honoring God too. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. So when, he, when the vision came down, he saw a sheet filled with animals, but he saw uncleanliness and, and um, unholiness among those animals. Correct. Okay. okay, well, why would God give him visions of animals that, that were clean or unclean? Why, why, would, why lower a sheet filled with animals? What was he teaching? Well, what God was teaching that under the new covenant since Jesus was born and entered into the world and died and rose again that all things from heaven and under heaven are clean to the believer the Lord was preparing Peter for what he wanted him to do uh, with the Gentiles the message of salvation went first to the Jew, but in God's plan, it was also to go to the Gentiles. And now, Peter was learning by the 
clean and unclean animals that the Jew, uh, the Gentiles were just as clean and just as loved by God as the Jewish people were. But the, the Jewish people were his chosen people. Didn't he love them more than any other people? No, God loved the Gentiles every bit as much as he loved the Jews. He chose the Jews to be a nation under God. That was the beginning of his plan. In the New Testament, the plan continues with Jesus. Born in Bethlehem, he is teaching Peter that he loves all people, not just Jews. God is teaching Peter the difference between his New Testament plan for Peter for his people and the traditions of the Old Testament. So I have an idea. Let's play a game of uh, Bible truth versus Bible tradition. Okay. Are you going to go first? Uh, okay. First statement, you win some, you lose some. Truth or tradition, is that the question? Truth or tradition. You win some and you lose some. I'm going to say that's truth. It is. It's in the Ecclesiastics 3, 6. I got that one right. You got it right. Is it my turn? Your turn. Okay. So... Is this truth or tradition? Obey your parents. That is truth. It is truth. That is, we're told to obey our parents in Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. The next one is, a penny saved is a penny earned. Truth or tradition? So, a penny saved or a penny earned, is that in the Bible, making it a truth? Or is it a tradition, making it just a saying we know? A penny saved and it's a penny earned, that is truth. That's yes. in the Bible. That is. It's in Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. Okay, so this one, is this in the Bible? Do unto others as they have done to you. Oh, this is a tricky one. It is. But it's not correct. It's a tradition. That is a, that is a tradition. Because Matthew 7, 12 teaches about our conduct towards other people, that we always put the other person first. And we are to do unto others as we would have them do unto us, not as they've done to us in the past. Can you imagine Jeepers, what a, what a world it would be. Yeah, but what a world it would be if we treated everybody the way we wanted Absolutely. to be treated. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, next one. Truth or tradition? Knowledge is power. Oh, that one's easy. That is truth. That is truth. That's in Proverbs 24, 5 through 6. It teaches us that knowledge, not only biblical knowledge, but as you go to school, either homeschool or you go to public school and you go to college, it's important to get a good education and to be well-rounded as an individual, but especially know your Bible. I think, therefore I am. Is that a tradition or is that a biblical truth? It's kind of a unusual statement. I think, therefore, I am. That's what it says. Yeah, I'm going to say that's a tradition. That doesn't sound like Bible stuff. You're absolutely right, because in Ephesians 1 through 3 through 6, we are taught that we are created by God. We don't just think ourselves into being. God created us, and he created us for a reason. That's true. Okay, here's the next one. Think this one through. To love others, you must first love yourself. 
Is that in the Bible or is that a tradition? Oh, that's a tradition. And that's a tradition that we hear a lot. We hear that you must first love yourself before you can love others. And that is, that is not what we learn in the Bible. The Bible, Philippians 2, 3, teaches that we must esteem others higher than ourselves. And again, what that means, we must care for the other person more than we care for ourselves. And if uh, we were doing that today, we wouldn't be having the problems that we're having in the streets today. It is important to take care of ourselves. And it is important that we recognize we're God's creatures to be in relationship with God. And if we're in strong relationship with God, that's a good, good way for us to be taking care of ourselves. But, but, but Philippians is, is, is where you can find that loving others first than yourself. Okay, the next one is forgive and forget. Is that truth or is that tradition? So I guess that means if somebody hurts me, I, am I supposed, we know I'm supposed to forgive them, but I'm supposed to forget about it? What does God do with our sins? Oh. <laughs> All right, that's truth. I'm going to say that's truth. In Jeremiah 31, 34, he teaches us that God puts away his our sins and does not look on them ever again. Once we are born again of Jesus Christ as our Savior, our sins are taken away. God forgets all about them. And we are to forgive as we are forgiven. Absolutely. Okay. So is this truth or tradition? This one should be easy, and you should all be able to say this one out, out loud immediately. Jesus loves you. Oh, that is true. That's true. John 3.16. The next one is God is love. Is that truth or tradition? That's, that is truth. And that is truth that we hope lives in your hearts. It lives in our hearts. And one of the things that we know is that when we're having a bad day or a pandemic or a riot or just we're disappointed because of the weather, we know that all those feelings that they come to us in these situations, knowing the truth, knowing that God is love and God loves us is, is a very, very good step in trying not to get the blahs about it. Yeah, it is so, so important to remember that God is love and that Jesus commanded us the greatest commandment is love. And we need to keep that in our hearts. We need to keep an attitude of prayer and uh, our life will be not easy, but we will be able to face the challenges of life daily grind every day if we keep Christ in our hearts and we stay in an attitude of prayer. So Julia, yes, with sir. that, will yes, you sir. lead us in our closing prayer? Yes, sir. This is this was a good lesson. This was a God doesn't often lower a sheep full of animals Not to teach us. I but, haven't seen it before. But it is it is a great example that God will use all kinds of lessons. Probably to teach have snakes us. in that sheep too. Oh no, I don't want to talk about snakes. Okay, we'll pray now. Okay. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the many different ways that you will reach out to us to teach us. We ask you to please help us find the lessons you'd have us know by having us come to you in prayer, by having us study your word, and in our everyday life, Lord, as we encounter situations, please open our hearts and our eyes and our ears to hear you teaching us through those situations. Help us to be kind, Lord, to be kind to others, to be kind to ourselves, and help us to remember that no matter what's going on, you are there, you sent your son Jesus to die and to on the cross and to rise again so that our sins would be forgiven and that we would be assured of eternal life. We thank you for that blessing, Lord, 
We thank you for this day. And we say all this in Jesus' name. And then we say, Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye-bye.